Hey guys, Christian from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 3 from the May 2016 POA Paper 2. If you want to see the other solutions for this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so as per usual, we take a read of the information. So in September, Grenade's cash book showed an overdrawn balance of 3400 which did not agree with the balance in his bank statement. All right. In checking his cash book with his bank statement, Grenade observed the following. All right, let's take a look. So it says here, right, a check paid to Blue for 1238 was correctly entered in the bank statement, but entered in the cash book as 1328. So we're gonna have to fix the cash book for that because the cash book contained an error. Next, we have bank charges for the month of 100 were entered on the bank statement, but not in the cash book. So it says not entered in cash book, so we're going to have to put that in the cash book. Right, so the bank paid Grenade's insurance of 900 as instructed by standing order. So a standing order will be present in the bank statement, but not in the cash book. So, so far we're only updating the cash book. Here we have deposits of 8,000 made to the bank statement on 29 September did not appear on the bank statement. Oh, right, so that's a bank lodgement. That's gonna go in the bank reconciliation statement. We have dividends of 2100 from Red Limited paid directly into Grenade's bank account. So that's a direct deposit that has to be therefore included in the updated cash book. Four checks totaling 52 that had not been presented to the bank for payment. Ooh, well, those are unpresented checks. So those will go in the bank rec. And here we have a check for 300 received from Yellow on 2nd of September had been returned by the bank for insufficient funds. So return checks, NSF checks will, be, will have to be updated in the cash book. Okay, so the, let's start from there. So we're going to update this cash book. So we have an overdrawn balance of 3400 So an overdraft is a situation where we have spent more money than we have in the bank and the bank has lent us the money to be able to spend. So of course, that's a prearranged facility with your bank. They won't just give you money just so. They have to make sure you agree to pay, pay it back and with interest. So it's a liability and we'll therefore have a credit balance at start. All right, so I think um, with the exception of two items, say everything else goes in the cash book, right? So a check paid to Blue for 1238 was correctly entered in the bank's statement, but entered in the cash book as 1328. Okay, so that's an overstated payment. So it means on the credit side, the payment would have been too high by $90. So we're gonna have to go on the debit side and put 90 to kind of balance it back off, all right? Uh, next, bank charges for the month of 100 were entered on the bank statement on the cash book. Okay, right. So we said bank charges will reduce the amount in the cash book, well, in the bank account. Therefore, you're going to have to credit the cash book for that. Uh, the bank paid Grenade's insurance of 900 as instructed by standing order. So that's a payment that was in the bank statement, but not in the cash book. So we're going to have to credit the cash book because payments will reduce the amount of money in the bank. Bank is an asset. And to record a reduction in an asset, you need to credit the asset account. All right, so deposits here did not appear in the bank statement. That's going to go in the bank rec. Next, dividends of 2100 from Red were paid directly into the... Okay, right. So that would have increased our, our account. And when we now find out about it, we're going to have to update our cash book. And dividends paid in will increase the bank balance. Bank is an asset. To record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. All right, uh, four checks totaling this. Okay, so those are unpresented checks. And finally, the, right, the NSF check. That's gonna go on the credit side because if we received it initially, it would have gone on the debit side. But then when the bank returned it, we realized, hey, we didn't actually get the money. So we have to kind of undo the receipt. And if receipts are recorded on the debit side, to undo a receipt, you have to go on the credit side. Right, now it looks here like we're still gonna end up with an overdraft. So the balance is gonna be carried on again from the debit side and brought down on the credit side. So we still have an overdraft of 2,510. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll along so we can take a look at the bank reconciliation statement. Okay, so for the bank reconciliation statement, we were not given the bank statement balance. So we have no choice but to start with the updated cash book balance that we just found of 2510. Now, there are only two items that will go inside of here. The first thing is the deposits of 8,000 made to the bank account. So those are bank lodgements. So what we will do is we will subtract them, right? If we start in with the uh, updated cash book balance, and then the unpresented checks of 5200, we're gonna to have to add those back. And that'll give us a, uh, yeah, an overdraft of 5310. 
Now, the question didn't give us what the bank statement balance was, so we have no way to know if we were correct, right? Now, if you're going through this and you realize, hey, I'm a bit rusty or I don't know how to do bank reconciliation statements at all, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So please be sure to check out that series of videos because it'll really bring you up to speed with the logic behind bank recs and how to do it and how to cater for all those errors in each individual item, right? Trust me, you're going to like it. Okay, let's see what else the question wanted us to do. All right, so part B for this question is asking us to list two bank statement items which would be used to adjust the net income if the net income was calculated before the bank statement was received. Okay, so the two items, two of the items are about bank charges and the dividends. You could also have used the standing order for insurance, right? So two bank statement items that could be used to adjust the net income, uh, bank charges and dividends received. Uh, part C is asking us list one internal and one external user of, of accounting information. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to give you a list here, right? So internal users, management, board of directors, employees, internal auditors, external users, shareholders, investors, financial institutions, tax and government agencies, right? If anyone disagrees that shareholders shouldn't be external, but they should be internal, message in the comments below, we can have a discussion because you might have a, if you're able to justify your point, I'll change my answer. Cool. Let's take a look at the last part of this question, shall we? Okay, so in this last part of the question, it says, complete the following table by stating the accounting concept or principle violated in each given situation. I'm gonna scroll a little bit. All right, so we have three situations. So a business owner pays the wage of his housekeeper and charges it to his business expenses. Well, that's definitely a violation of the separate entity or the business entity concept, right? Next, a business owner plans to sell all equipment next year at a profit of 6,000, but he records the amount of profit in this year's income statement. No, you cannot record profit before it is, uh, revenue before it is earned, right? So the prudence concept, or actually maybe the better answer to put there would be the revenue recognition concept, right? Whichever you, one you guys prefer, let me know in the comment section below. All right, and finally, we have every year a business owner uses different methods to depreciate his non-current assets. Right, that's definitely a violation of the consistency concept. You, you are supposed to use the same method from year to year unless there's a justifiable reason to switch from one to the next. If it would improve the quality of the information delivered by the financial statements, that's a good reason. Okay, so that's about it for this question. If you wanna see more videos, I'm gonna put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you know anytime I drop a new video. Check out my website for free payaway handouts. And as usual, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.